안녕하세요. Welcome to the class. Uh, we'll continue to study uh, the second part of uh, shamanism today. We'll continue uh, the, the current thoughts and religion, as I just said, second part of shamanism. So, who becomes a shaman? Called mudang. This is voluntary things. You study, or uh, so who becomes the shaman? So we'll study different ways to become shaman, and types of shaman, too, of course, uh, and investigate how and why the traditional knowledge of shamanism still exists and pass on in this very contemporary uh, Korean culture. Scholars in this field uh, generally agree that there exist three different types of shaman or mudang exist in Korea. First, hereditary shamans or called sesum mudang in Korean, hereditary shamans. The second type, spirit appointed shamans or called nerim mudang in Korean. And finally, trained shamans. If you take a look at this again, the first type, hereditary shamans, they inherit the profession from parents who are shamans. So it's hereditary, you inherit the status. The second type is uh, pretty much uh, self-explanatory. Spirit appointed. So after a, a revelation experience, after a, a revelation experience, especially, uh, sometimes they have this uh, severe illness because of unknown reason. They're going through this physical pain and also emotional and also uh, social uh, problems around the individual and also the family the person belongs to. Anyway, so they realize it's a calling from the spirit. So they become shaman. They had to become a shaman. So it's spirit appointed shamans, we call it. And finally, trained shaman. They're not possessed by the spirit. There's no connection to the spirit. Their parents, they are not necessarily, they, ha they don't have to be a shaman themselves. They simply learn how to be a shaman. So as a profession, they learn the profession through apprenticeship and to live and, and uh, perform uh, good uh, as, a, as a way of living. So that's the last type of mudang exists in Korea. So what does shaman do? Uh, we talked about the mediating uh, role between the spirit and the people. And in this section, uh, we take a closer look. And I listed here basically five different functions. First, there are basically the priest. They lead this uh, religious service uh, ritual called kut. So they're like priest who's leading the mass or other type of services in other uh, religious practice. So they are the basically priest. The secondly, they place a prophetic functions. They convey message from the spirit to the client. And responding to the questions and concerns from the clients, they predict the future about the clients. So this is very prophetic functions that uh, Budang perform. Oh, sorry, go back. And third function is clinical. They heal the client, the patient who is ill. So based on, rely on a traditional uh, uh, approach, they try to uh, heal the uh, the, the client's illness. Uh, a lot of times they're trying to chase away the evil spirits that's the cause 
of the illness. So that's very clinical function. And the fourth role is, interestingly, recreational and entertaining. So there are a lot of singing and dancing in, 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 uh, in, in shamanist ritual could, if you uh, have a chance to observe. Uh, it's long, uh, very festive uh, uh, event sometimes, especially when they have this good for the good of a whole village member. There's a series of, of uh, actions and events and dance uh, through the night, singing. Uh, so a lot of scholars think uh, the traditional music itself perhaps originate from the very good shaman's ritual. And it's very entertaining and also uh, recreational. Finally, therapeutic role, serving the religious and emotional needs of the clients. So people have concerns uh, about the family member who uh, passed away uh, and they're concerned about their well-being. And shamans, they try to uh, help them uh, by having uh, good or other uh, methods uh, to heal the, uh, the wor chase away the worries and, and other concerns of daily life. So we call it a uh, therapeutic role uh, of, of shamans. So uh, in the first part of shamanism, uh, we talked about three different uh, types or, or categories. Uh, if I uh, uh, remind you again, first was the hereditary, whose parents were shamans, so you inherit the very status. And the secondly is you're possessed by the spirit. You, there's a calling from the spirit. You have to be a shaman. Sometimes if you reject that calling, again, uh, the series of, 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 of misfortunes happens to you. Not only that, your family members. So that's uh, second type. And finally, the trained shaman. Uh, they have no connection, no calling from, from the uh, spirit. Simply they're just trained to, to dance, to sing, and to, to lead the shamanist ritual. So that's uh, the final type. Again, uh, summary, uh, you will again go back to read again. We have five different functions of, of shamans uh, in Korean uh, shamanism. Okay, so this uh, wraps up our uh, two weeks long, two week long uh, study of, of shamanism. So next week, uh, we'll talk about another uh, Korean religion, Buddhism. Thank you.